Hi, I am Dr. Sandeep Bhattacharya and let us understand today catecholamines in this video. Now, uh, we, have, we know catecholamine as epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine. Now, what is this catecholamine all about? So, I'll take you in a new journey of the structure of the catecholamine and we understand this catecholamine from a newer perspective than what we traditionally understand in our uh, routine medical field. In our normal circumstances, we as physicians, as doctors are very much afraid of the structure, the chemical structure of the molecule. So I'll show you how it is a very interesting to know and it in increases the depth of our understanding and the knowledge regarding the molecule its working its action and it makes us makes it easy to remember so uh, continue with me uh, for a short while and then we know this is a routine benzene ring that we know from our organic chemistry days now this benzene ring if it has hydroxyl group attached over here something is something is getting attached around here we will see that shortly now this benzene ring when something is attached over here this automatically is known as phenyl and this two hydroxyl uh, molecules when it attaches over here these hydroxyl molecules are at position 3 and 4 so 3 and 4 dihydroxyl phenyl ring so what is this ring what is this known as? This is dihydroxyl phenyl ring. And this dihydroxyl phenyl ring in organic chemistry language is known as catechol. So what is catechol? Catechol is nothing but dihydroxyl phenyl. So it is a simple organic chemistry thing, nothing medical about it. Now, at, attaching to this catechol is ethyl molecule. Uh, that is ethyl means two carbon. There are two carbon molecules attaches and at the end of it there is an amino group over here. Now this two carbon difference from this phenyl ring is very important and if you just go through various amino acids and all those you will find that all the thing, all these molecules have two carbon difference between amine and this. So that is besides one point. Now this two carbon is ethyl. So this we can call it as ethyl and NH2 is amine. So what is catecholamine? Catecholamine is nothing but phenyl ethyl amine. Rather more appropriately 3,4 dihydroxy phenyl ethyl amine. So in short because this 3,4 dihydroxy phenyl is known as catechol. So in other words it is catechol ethyl amine or in short catecholamine. So for any molecule to be called as catecholamine, it should have obviously amine, but for any molecule to be called catecholamine, it should have a dihydroxyphenyl. So a very common question comes up, which are the molecules which are not catecholamine in, in our MCQ? So that a short form is PEA, not catecholamine. These are not catecholamines. Easy way to remember is PEA, phenylephrine, epidrine, and epidemic. And as uh, as you would see that these molecules don't have hydroxyl groups at this at this phenyl ring, and therefore they they are not technically catechol, and therefore these are not catecholamines technically. And <clears throat> so the second thing is that this hydroxyl group is imparting it the alpha characteristic that is the alpha activity and it is also uh, providing it a beta 1 activity. The, the next important thing is that this hydroxyl group there is another hydroxyl group over here. Now these hydroxyl groups wherever hydroxyl groups comes up they give polarity. They give polarity to the molecule. So these hydroxyl groups are also important for, for providing polarity. Now this polarity, this polarity, 
makes it water soluble makes it water soluble now this because it becomes polar becomes water soluble so therefore it does not cross blood brain barrier it can it, it is not lipid soluble it does not cross blood brain barrier now this hydroxyl group also provides one more important uh, property and that is this causes this has a decrease that has a very short half life it has a very short half life why does it have a very short half life because the enzyme catechol o methyl transferase catechol catechol o methyl transferase which transfers a methyl group over here it transfers a methyl group over here and kills this hydroxyl and because this hydroxyl group is very much important for attachment to this alpha and beta receptor so this hydroxyl group is important for attaching to the alpha beta receptor and therefore this hydroxyl group the uh, removal of this hydroxyl group decreases the attachment and therefore causes decrease in the half life so catecholamines have a very short half life they are not they are water soluble compounds not lipid soluble and are not able to cross blood brain barrier having said that this another enzyme which is known as monoamine oxidase this monoamine oxidase acts at this site this monoamine oxidase attaches to this carbon molecule and if this site if this site is occupied by another molecule if this site for example is occupied by certain methyl group or ethyl group so if this site is occupied then monoamine oxidase will obviously not able to attach on this place and then this, this molecule action of the molecule would be enhanced T half would be enhanced and therefore the, uh, the action would be enhanced and certain uh, items certain uh, drugs like example amphetamine amphetamine has a ethyl group at a methyl group attached over here but amphetamine does not have this hydroxyl group so pomp enzyme cannot act over here i just told you the which are not catecholamines pea phenylephrine ephedrine and amphetamine are not technically catecholamines because amphetamine does not have uh, this hydroxyl group and amphetamine has a methyl group attached and the, hence this amphetamine has a longer half life and number 2 there is no polarity and therefore amphetamine can penetrate the blood brain barrier this proposition is giving polarity and there is nothing over here amphetamine can penetrate blood brain barrier and therefore it is a cns stimulant acts for anorexia and as and therefore it has a additional additive effect as a drug uh, uh, which causes a drug addiction because it has a cns penetration <coughs> the next thing is that this site amine this amine site if this amine there is a substitution of this amine with this am with certain alkyl group so for example a methyl group attaches to this amine more and more <coughs> methyl group attaches to the amine that is more and more heavier the scale becomes the more as more and more heavier the scale becomes this increases the beta 2 activity so if more alkyl groups get attached over here if more alkyl groups attached over here the beta 2 activity would increase even more and various synthetic sympathomimetic agents for example salbutamol and similar drugs take this advantage and they increase this beta 2 activity by increasing substitution at the at this amine tail and it more and more heavier this tail becomes cs3 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 more and more alkyl groups continue to add the more heavier the as and as and more heavier that tail becomes 
this this uh, selectivity for the beta 2 continues to increase and such a, uh, such a drug uh, are synthesized for beta 2 activity having said that one more point is that we have two prototype catecholamines as you very appropriately know as epinephrine and norepinephrine epinephrine and norepinephrine and what is this epinephrine and norepinephrine epinephrine and norepinephrine is simply norepinephrine is you read this norepinephrine as no no r epinephrine no r epinephrine what is r r is this r is any alkyl group that is methyl group so in organic chemistry you write al a methyl group as a r so no r epinephrine is nor epinephrine that means a nor epinephrine is simply this product nor epinephrine is simply this product nor epinephrine is simply this product that means it does not have any r group attached over here and when it does not have any r group attached over here it does not have a beta 2 activity it does not have a beta 2 activity and in epinephrine in epinephrine this r get attach attaches hydrogen is removed and a r get attaches and in this case this r happens to be a methyl group and that imparts beta 2 activity in epinephrine so epinephrine is with r group and nor epinephrine has is no r epinephrine that is there is no methyl group over there and when there is no r that is this tail becomes tail is not heavy so therefore uh, nor epinephrine has only alpha activity some beta 1 activity and no beta 2 activity it has no beta 2 activity so it has a good amount of alpha activity it has a lesser amount of beta 1 activity but it has no beta 2 activity on the other hand epinephrine has a r group over here so it has good amount of beta 2 activity beta 1 is there and there is alpha activity as well so there is epinephrine has alpha beta beta 2 activity nor epinephrine has alpha beta 1 but hardly any beta 2 activity there is no beta 2 activity in nor epinephrine so that gives us a very essential understanding of what epinephrine and a nor epinephrine that difference is like A uh, easy way to remember it also is that we can remember it by this mnemonic B E A N beta epinephrine alpha norepinephrine. So ep norepinephrine is primarily alpha. Norepinephrine is primarily alpha, and there is no beta. Beta when when I say beta, it is beta two. So there is hardly any beta. Whereas uh, epinephrine, epinephrine is primarily beta, and there is very little alpha. Alpha would be there, but there would be because of this position. This because of this position, alpha would be there. So there would be, but the 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 quantity of the alpha the uh, uh, action of the alpha would be lesser. Another very essential difference between an alpha and a beta. Alpha is a alpha is a stronger alpha has a stronger activity. Alpha has a stronger activity, while beta is a has a sensitive activity. Alpha is more stronger to act, and beta is more sensitive to if there are so in other words if there are less number of uh, catecholamine present 
say for example in this epinephrine if there are less number of uh, molecules of epinephrine are there beta would be more sensitive if there are more number of epinephrines are there because alpha has a stronger action then alpha action would predominate and as the epinephrine continues to be uh, catabolized, uh, metabolized by form 10 of mao the alpha activity will continue to decrease and as the less number of alpha molecules of epinephrine remains available the beta being more sensitive the alpha being less sensitive the alpha activity goes down and the beta activity takes over 